Hi, I'm Abby from Ratings.com. We've designed a new test as part of our TV test bench, one that allows us to assess upscaling and sharpness image processing in a much more helpful way than originally. Instead of every TV getting a score of 8.0 for upscaling a 480p image, like a lot of you have pointed out over the years, we now have scores for upscaling that actually reflect the image quality and performance. At the moment, we've updated 24 TVs to this new test, and we have another 49 planned. And that's on top of testing new products, and of course, maintaining our longevity test. In this video, we'll walk you through this new test, how we created it, and look at our results so far to see which model and brands are better than the others. You can also compare the results yourself and make your own judgment by looking at the photos we took on our website. Our original test was part of the TV test bench since 2017, which in tech years isn't just old, but practically medieval. Over the course of those years, not only has TV processing changed and improved, but so has the understanding of what upscaling actually is. While the intention of the original test was to determine whether a TV could display a good-looking image at four common resolutions, over the years, a larger snag became apparent. There was too much variance in the image and no way of quantifying it. Across the multiple models of TVs, there are multiple ways of processing an image. Some TVs blur, some sharpen, and others do whatever this is. The problem was that we were never really measuring the TV's upscaling performance, which isn't helpful for anyone. Thankfully, this new upscaling test allows us to quantify these differences. But how does that help you? Well, the test can tell you two things about a TV. First, if it can scale up a low resolution image. This initial step is something we generally take for granted. Consider it this way, most TVs on the market are 4K models, but a significant amount of content on streaming platforms is 1080p. You don't really notice that the content isn't 4K. Even when you put 1080p and 4K content side by side, it's hard to tell the difference, which poses a measurement problem for us. Now, with a lower quality signal, like 480p, the TV's scaling algorithm has to make more guesses on how to upscale the content, about 7,948,800 more guesses to be exact. To pause a moment for the enthusiast crowd, we're not after what scaling algorithm the TV's using to make these guesses. That's much too difficult to assess, especially with processing features enabled and differences between picture modes. Instead, we're looking at what the TV does after upscaling the image. The recreated details and overall image clarity can indicate the TV's ability to fill in those pixels with good guesses. To start, we use a 480p DVD of a Spears and Munsell calibration pattern to set our sharpness levels. Our sharpness point is the highest setting we can achieve before artifacts lower the image quality. Most people probably won't touch this slider, let alone set it up this high. But even if you prefer a softer image, your TV is still running these processes. You just won't notice the differences as much. After calibration, we play a standardized boat video, also in 480p. This boat floats across the screen, a design feature to replicate real content. We noticed that noise reduction algorithms kick in only in motion, so we decided to apply that logic to this test to make sure that any AI upscaling processes are active. Plus, the constant motion keeps the screen from dimming, which is great because we need the white square up in the corner to make sure our camera settings are consistent across photos so you can compare them. This boat video has plenty of great areas for pixel peeping. When evaluating the images, we can look at a few of these specific areas. In the background, the shrub line and the shingles on the roof are good indicators of how well the TV reconstructs detail. TVs that are better at upscaling will make better distinctions between the shingles on the roof and the foliage on the shrubs. We also look at the severity of contrast boosting artifacts. Sharpness algorithms tend to boost the sharpness by boosting the contrast. This is more noticeable with TVs that are worse at upscaling since they'll often just plop a really dark spot next to a bright spot or a light spot next to a dark hard edge. Areas with text are the best to see this, especially the black ratings logo at the bottom there. And of course, there's the overall image clarity. Essentially, we're comparing this 480p version the TV has upscaled to the reference photo shown here. A TV that can accurately recreate the reference photo would score a 10. But at this point, the tech isn't quite there yet. 
So 9.0 is the best we've seen. And what does a 9.0 look like? Well, that would be the Sony A95K, or the X90K, or the A90K, or A95K. Basically any high-end Sony. But we'll focus on the X95K since the OLEDs are a little preoccupied right now. Right from the calibration, the Sony shows its capabilities. With the sharpness all the way up, the TV creates white lines that aren't in the actual image. It conjures them up from nowhere. Now, these white lines are considered artifacts since they do go away as you lower the sharpness. What's important about those lines is how natural they look. Upscaling is meant to be a hidden process, so you really shouldn't notice when a TV is doing it. That these white lines run parallel to the actual black lines means you probably wouldn't think those shouldn't be there, but instead wonder if the other TVs were just missing them in the first place. How this translates to our test and further into real content is that the added details are seamless. Take a look yourself at those pixel peeping areas and you'll see that the shingles are shingles. Foliage flourishes. Even in real content, they aren't blobby artifacts that actively stand out in the picture. They're barely detectable and contribute to the appreciation of the scene since it has added detail. Zendaya's hair, the windows in the background, all have a good amount of detail recreated. This is what the image looks like at 480p. But even if you input a higher resolution like 720p, these results are still true, just less noticeable. There's less detail for the TV to recreate and the Sony's image processing really shines. And to really emphasize how good good is, we'll take a look at the worst. The TCL 6 Series 646 2022 QLED has the opposite effect. The artifacts added here aren't seamless. They're blobby and patchy. The windows in the Spider-Man scene are now defined by blotches of white meant to boost the contrast. Zendaya's hair is a cluster of brown pixels instead of differentiated strands. Hence, the TCL 6 series scores a 3.0 for its upscaling and sharpness processing. That's the high and low of it, but what about the middle? For most things, the LG C2 is one of our most recommended TVs, but for upscaling, its performance is only all right. When upscaling from 480p, the C2 tends to soften the image. And as you can see, the contrast boosting reduces the amount of detail. For example, when you look in the background of the boat video, the shrubs are splotchy, and the siding on the house is reduced to one big white rectangle instead of individual siding pieces. In the Spider-Man scene, the same is true. Zendaya's hair clusters up, the detail in the rusty parts of the beams is lost around the edges, but most noticeably, the image looks softer overall. For the most part, upscaling performance is linked to the processor inside the TV, which is a combination of brand and price. In this test, the brand matters much more than the price. The high-end Sony models with the Bravia XR processor all outperform the lower-end models with the X1 processor, like the Sony X75K. In turn, the Sony X75K outperforms flagship models from LG and most other models from Hisense, Vizio, and Amazon. The LG OLEDs with the high-end processors like the C2 outperform the lower-end models like the QNED90. However, these models are beat out by non-LG budget TVs like the Hisense U6H, which actually upscales pretty well. As a personal aside, that's great, because my Hisense is constantly upscaling since I forgot to upgrade my internet plan after graduating. But Samsung represents an interesting edge case here to our test. Their TVs look the same. What we've found so far is that the low-end Q60B looks just as good as the QN900B which is interesting given that the QN900B is an 8K model that we'd expect to perform much better. Even with different picture modes, sharpness settings, and features enabled, the sharpness processing seems to be pretty identical across models. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, all of them upscale well. And you'll notice even comparing the Samsungs to the Sonys, the differences are minute. As we move into the green zone of our scoring, the differences are much more minor. So if you're looking for a TV to pair with not 4K worthy cheap internet plan or your DVD player, or because you're reliant on over the air broadcasts from being out in the boonies, you'll be satisfied with pretty much any option in the green range. So how can you measure the upscaling capabilities of a TV? Turns out it just takes some dedication, 
a sharp eye, and constant comparison across dozens of TV models. This test now replaces four resolutions boxes in the review, but you'll still be able to see whether your TV supports them just a little further down under the conveniently named supported resolutions box. Now, if you find that your upscaling experience differs from what our new test shows, we'd love to hear about it. Your feedback helps us constantly improve our testing. This update went live as of April 28th, 2023. And so far we've tested 24 TVs with another 49 planned. All new reviews will now feature this test, so you can check out any of our new reviews like the LG C3 and see the full test results. While upscaling was the main focus, there were a few other fixes we made as well. Notably, we needed to fix the movie usage score, but to better reflect the current landscape of HDR media, we applied those fixes directly to the HDR movie score and dropped the standard movie score from our usage ratings. We also cut out the black crush test due to the improvements made in our blooming test. Our improved blooming test now covers aspects the black crush test was trying to compensate for, making it redundant. Currently, we don't have plans to reinstate the black crush test or design future processing tests, but we're always interested in what our users think. I mean, this test was fixed because our users were so vocal about it. We do what we do because of you. So if there's a test or an improvement you'd like to see in our TV testing, sound off in the comments below. I promise you, we read everything. The tests and changes I just mentioned are written in much more detail in the changelog linked in the description. Shout out to Adam for writing the changelog. It's an excellent summary of everything we've done to improve our test methods. As you can see, there is a ton of work that goes into designing these tests, from the initial research to the testing and more testing and even more testing that goes into delivering a final result to you. Many teams and people are involved which means we probably have a spot for you. We've just revamped our careers page so you can head on over there and take a look at our open postings. Until next time, I'm Abby from ratings.com where we help you find the best product for your needs.